There's no denying the beauty of Samsung's latest Note iteration. The Note 5 is simply amazing when it comes to its form, but how does that affect function, if at all? Today we're going to find out. The Galaxy Note 5 was unveiled and released within about a week and it seems to be the talk of the town in the mobile tech space, both good and bad. Samsung's previous iterations of the Note's design have been more evolutionary than revolutionary, but this year that all changed. We now have a device that's built from metal and glass, much like its smaller brother, the Galaxy S6, and it may prove to be quite fragile if you drop it, but damn, does it feel good in your hand. Most of this design language is old news in terms of Samsung's smartphone releases, but there are a few key changes to point out. This year, Samsung added a touch of curvature to the Note series, but not where you'd expect it. The rear glass panel now has curved edges, much like the front of the S6 Edge and now Edge Plus. And it's an interesting design choice, and it really makes sense actually. It's very, very comfortable to hold. Glass is glass though, and because of that, plus the curves, it's a little slippery. Oh, and it's also a fingerprint magnet, but that's old news. Still, I can't stand wiping off fingerprints all day long, so I covered up the backside with the D-brand skin and called it a day. And if you want to pick one up for yourself, I'll drop a link below. The S Pen has also been changed for the better, or worse, depending on which way you slide it into the phone, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> the S Pen sits nearly flush with the bottom of the device and can be removed from its side with a simple press or click on its top end. It's certainly a very satisfying click and something that can be somewhat habit forming if you're into that kind of thing. But more important than the things being added with this fresh design, there are a few important things that were laid to rest. First up, say goodbye to your precious IR blaster because it's gone. <laughs> There's also no replacing the 3000 milliamp hour battery inside or expanding the storage via micro SD card because, well, everything here is basically taped together with some very strong adhesive. Yes, I agree this sucks, but complaining about it won't bring it back. I mean, it is what it is, like it or not. At the end of the day, Samsung has built a very pretty phone. Solid frame, slick curves, glass walls, and basically a notified Galaxy S6. And I'm okay with that for now. If you're not, I'm sure there are some pretty good deals going on with the Galaxy Note 4 right now, and well, I will link some below for you if you're interested. Around the front side, we have a beautiful 5.7 inch QHD Super AMOLED display. Hands down, this is the best looking screen on a smartphone. It's that good. It's super responsive, colors are crisp and vivid, and it's eye candy to look at. Above that display, we have a five megapixel front facing camera, and along the bottom half, there's still a home button with a built-in fingerprint scanner, which works pretty good, and it's identical to what came along with the Galaxy S6, and we have a couple of capacitive navigation buttons. Around the backside, we have a 16 megapixel camera that's quite possibly the best on a smartphone, but more on that later. And you'll also find a heart rate sensor, which I rarely use, and an LED flash. As far as hardware goes, Samsung's Galaxy Note 5 appears to be the full package. Powering this beast of a smartphone is the Exynos 7420 octa-core processor, four gigabytes of RAM, and 32 gigabytes of internal storage in the base model, and it tops out at 64 4 gigabytes in the high-end model. The Note 5 ships with Lollipop and everything is smooth as far as software is concerned. The internal specifications handle just about everything you'd need and I've had a very fluid experience with the software, especially compared to the Note 4's iteration of Android and its skinned features. Software elements are a bit different from previous Samsung devices, but if you've used one before, you'll have no problem navigating it. Obviously, the main reason you'd buy a Galaxy Note is for the S Pen, large screen, and multitasking features that come along with with it. Samsung's standard multitasking features are available again, and I've always found them to be useful on a display of this size. It's definitely a power user phone, but the multitasking isn't exactly what makes the Note so desirable. Personally, I've never been a fan of the S Pen, but there is one feature this time around that has sold me on it altogether. Samsung has implemented a new screen off memo software feature that will allow you to quickly take notes even without unlocking the device. It's a major win in my opinion, and I've been using the S Pen more than ever because of it. It's like the simplest form of writing down a note. Just pull out the pen, write a note, put it back in, you're done. I love it. Along with that, you have the ability to take stupid long screenshots using scroll capture. Instead of taking multiple screenshots to capture a long web page or document, the Note 5 can automatically stitch together a grouping of them. From there, you can save it or share it and even take notes on top of it using the S Pen. In the pop-up air command menu, Samsung has added the ability to store up to three app shortcuts as well. It's not as helpful as I'd hoped though, but it's another new feature to sell you on the upgrade. 
I'd just prefer to tap the app on my home screen instead of pulling out the S Pen to launch it, but it's helpful if you keep any pen related apps there for easy access, I guess. As for camera performance, this thing is a boss all around. It's safe to say that at this very moment in time, Samsung has the best camera on a smartphone, hands down. The camera app launches almost instantly simply by double pressing the home button and picture taking is super fast. It really makes everything easy to do. You get the shot you wanted the first time. This 16 megapixel shooter with optical image stabilization works wonders in the photography department. Pictures are stunning and low light performance is at its best. This sensor may be the same when compared to the Galaxy S6's camera, but with enhanced stabilization across the board here, there's no stopping this beast. I've put together a full gallery of photos taken with the Galaxy Note 5, and if you're interested in checking it out and analyzing them for yourself, I will leave a link below for you. Words do it no justice. You really have to see it for yourself. Along with crispy photos, we also have video recording up to UHD resolution, and the optical image stabilization keeps everything smooth in this department as well. Moving along to battery life, it's been super inconsistent in my testing, unfortunately. I've been using the Verizon T-Mobile and AT&T variants of the Note 5 just to see how different the results were between the carriers, and I was surprised. T-Mobile was the most inconsistent of all though, coming in between 2.5 and 5.5 hours of screen on time in my testing under moderate use. I just had really mixed results. This is all dependent on signal strength, screen brightness, and other factors though, so your mileage may vary, but it started to get better towards the end of my testing and closer to what I expected. The AT&T and Verizon models were more consistent at an average of five hours of screen on time after disabling some unnecessary bloatware, and there was a lot of it. <laughs> Keep in mind though, these are averages, so some days were definitely better than others. The good news is the Galaxy Note 5 charges up quickly with fast charge Charging and even wireless charging which has gotten faster and it'll fill up the device from 0 to 100 in only 120 minutes. So what's the end result here? Well I'm not a huge fan of the fragile glass and metal design but I'd be lying if I said it didn't look good. This is one of Samsung's best smartphones, as it should be, duh. Sadly, Samsung has alienated some of its power users by sealing up the battery and removing SD card expansion in favor of that fragile design. Is it worth the money? Well, that's somewhat subjective. It is a great phone with an amazing camera and for the most part, pretty solid battery life when it's consistent. Should you buy it though? Well, if you need an S Pen in your life, I would say go for it. That's the main selling point here, of course. If you want just a big screen and a big battery with Samsung features, you may want to check out the S6 Edge Plus and make sure you subscribe for my full review on that in the near future. I'm a fan of the Note series this year, but I can live with the compromises being made. The question is, can you? Thanks again for watching everyone. This is Dom and I'll catch you in the next video.